from the Denver Broncos Media Center. Welcome to Broncos Country Tonight with Ryan Edwards and Benjamin Albright. Welcome to Broncos Country Tonight. We get excited about the upcoming season for the Denver Broncos and joined in the studio by the great Hall of Famer, Steve Atwater. What up, Bat? What up, Warren Edwards? Benjamin Albright? What's going on? How y'all doing, man? Good to have you here. Uh, I wanted to have, a, it's a bit of a fun exercise. Uh, Nate Tice with The Athletic wrote an article about breakout players. All right, and, and the Broncos actually were represented on here twice by both Pat Sertan and Albert Okawebenon. Mm, I thought nice. it would be fun for us to pick our breakout players on the offense and defensive side of the ball. We each get one player. The rules here are very simple. You cannot take a player that is outside of their second or third NFL season and have yet to make a Pro Bowl or All-Pro team. So they, they basically, Bradley Chubb, for example, could have a breakout season but he would be out of bounds on this because he has, first of all, been in the league too long, and second, he's already made a Pro Bowl. Dang, Portland man, Sutton is pick. another example of a guy made a Pro Bowl, cannot be considered in this, all right? So we're going to roll through here, and we're going to do the snake draft style. So Steve Atwater is going to go first, Benjamin Albright second, I will go third, I will have back-to-back picks, then, then, then Steve with the final pick. One offensive player, one defensive player. You ready for this? Uh, but we'll see. Okay, all right. We'll see. Steve, you're up first. Go offense or defense, whatever direction you want to go. I thought we were going offense. Mm-hmm. That's what I thought. You could go we're, either way. We're going offense. We're all going offense. All right. Oh, I, I, well, it doesn't matter to me because I go back to back. So. Okay. Well, that's a good point. Uh, all right. So on the offensive side, my offensive player who's going to make a big, bold jump this year, offensive guard. In my oh man, I know I hurt somebody's <laughs> heart because I took one of your you players. You just took my player, but it's you fine. just totally uh, just took Vince Flair. You know, I, I really I, I've I've liked him. Uh, you know, right from the draft day, I love the the video of him knocking over the tree and you know, showing the belly. Although he doesn't want to publicize it that much now, he's got the big belly. But hey, it's part of <laughs> maybe the I deal. can start showing. It. <laughs> but uh, I just love his game. I, I love how he works so hard during the play and after the play and as a defensive player, man, he's a nightmare. I, I used to, I remember going against Steve Wisniewski with the Raiders. He used to do the same thing long after the play is over. He's still down there trying to block uh, defensive backs and we're trying to get out of the way. Got to look out for this guy. So Quinn Miners is my guy. Going to have a great year this year. I think that's a great pick. And honestly, you're, you were a hundred percent right because if Ben didn't take him, he was going to be on my list of guys that I would consider yeah. He's going to be a full-time starter this year. Um, even in, in a limited season for him, he looked tremendous. And of course he's got the versatility. If they have an injury or performance problem, he can slide all over the place in the interior of the offensive line. I wasn't actually going to take win I really wasn't. Okay. All um, right. I thought he broke out last year. Honestly, I thought that uh, my celebration during the draft when everybody was <laughs> saying who was validated. I just it's wanted... you. No, no, <laughs> Sorry, I got my arms a little hurt from patting myself on the back. I had a little you shoulder injury. You can't take, um, well, you can't take credit for him breaking out in half a season's performance and not as a full-time start. No, that's not I'm how just, it works. I'm just saying, I, you know, I, I, I did the research on this one. I put the time in. I, 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 gr- I ground right, the let's tape. Let's get to your pick. Let's literally, get to your literally pick. ground the tape on this. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, Specifically, just grinding. I, Calvin Anderson is, is my... Uh, oh, wow. Is my, oh, now, nice. technically, he's entering year four because he was 2019 was when he came into the league. So, I guess technically, I'm not really following the rules, although he's not really... I was going to re- say, yeah, really, he's in second or third year. What are you doing here? Well, he, I, you said third year. I thought you meant completed three years when I oh, started this project. All right. So, you know, the verbiage was a little off. But Calvin Anderson, I think he's going to win the right tackle job. I think he's going to have a breakout year, and I think he's going to establish himself. Uh, he's a very smart guy. He's, he's, he's very athletic. I think he's a great fit for what they want to do here. Billy Turner hadn't a chance to get out there and get any reps yet. And Calvin has been taking all the reps with the ones. And I think Calvin Anderson is going to win that right tackle job, and that's going to be my breakout player. Wow. That's amazing. We, we've got two offensive linemen as mm-hmm. our selected breakout players. It's remarkable. And Will I'm sitting Ryan here. Receiving of that. Well, that's the thing is I'm sitting here with Jerry Judy <laughs> and Javante Williams, both on the board. Yes. And I thought I'd have to choose between one or the other. I was just thrilled when you took an offensive lineman. Then I was like, okay, great. Well, I'll get one or the other. But Jerry Judy's going to do his thing, too. Don't get me wrong. Javante didn't break out last year. I Javante was not a pro bowler or an all pro last year. So he that wasn't part of the deal though. Well, they can't that have is. been one before. They can't not have that been one become, before. Yeah. Right. The, 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 the point but is I that they like become, Javante was kind of established. You know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go roll with a uh, wide receiver one in this offense. And I think it is going to be Jerry Judy. And so I, I, I think, I think Jerry Judy is going to be target one on this offense. He, he fits exactly with uh, the mold of that Devante Adams kind of player. You can move him all over the offense. I, I think Russell Wilson will be looking his way basically as often as possible. 
I think Javante is going to have a good year. I think the timeshare with Melvin Gordon is going to eat in statistically a little bit to what he does. You could see a little bit of a sophomore slump. We'll see. But I think Jerry Judy in year three is primed to just absolutely explode onto the scene. Only uh, person that can cover Jerry Judy is Benjamin Albright. I mean, you know, it, it's fair. It's fair. I, I try to I try not to harass him too much in practice. But, uh. <laughs> 856 yards receiving his first year, 467 this last year in limited capacity. Of course, only played 10 games. Um, you know, even if we expand that out and get him to 17 games, he's hitting around that same mark. He's easily going to eclipse a thousand yards this oh, yeah. year. And it wouldn't shock me if he's uh, just under 10 touchdowns. I think he's going to be used a lot more in the red zone than he was in the previous regime. All right. So I'm pretty thrilled about this. And by the way, we're going to post this up on Twitter later for people to for vote poll. on it and, and just see what people, you know, we'll, we'll see what the people say on, on you all of our Bane thing. I give it back to you. <laughs> the people. Now on the defensive side of the ball, boy, I really want to take Draymond Jones. That would be my pick. Okay. But I can't because he's going yeah. into his fourth year. So he is, he is excluded, but he would be the top guy. I'm going to go with the guy that I've been saying on Broncos country tonight, the radio show for quite some time that I think he's going to have a huge year is Jonas Griffith. I think Jonas Griffith is primed to be inside linebacker one on this team. He's got the mobility, the sideline to sideline. He's got the energy that this defense uh, needs Smart and player. yeah, he's an incredibly smart player. I, I, there's just, he's, he's one of those guys that just comes along and I think he's going to fit exactly with what the Broncos are trying to do. And again, I think there's some, some compliment there. Alex, Alex Singleton is going to play a role. Josie Jewell is going to play a role, but I think in the end, we're all going to agree at some point in the season that Jonas Griffith is the most valuable inside linebacker on this roster. So for me, Jerry Judy, Jonas Griffith, are my top two picks for breakout seasons for the Broncos. All right, Ben? I love Jonas Griffith, but I don't know how much play time he's going to get this year with Josie Jewell and the money tied to him. And then my breakout player, Baron Browning, who's going to be moving around from the edge to the inside backer, going to have kind of that Micah Parsons role this year. I think that he could be absolutely be a gigantic factor for this Denver Broncos team. And uh, uh, I just I just don't know how Jonas is going to get the reps when my guy's out there getting the reps. Well, they play different positions now, Ben. I don't know if you got the memo. Uh, Baron Browning now an outside linebacker. He's do both, though. Oh, I mean, you keep saying that, but that's not what everybody else is saying. So, I mean, it's, I mean, it's everybody fine. else said we weren't drafting Nick Benito too, but you know. <laughs> you, is that like, you're going to play that card forever. Like that's going to be the card that you get to play. Like, Hey, you know, I called Nick Benito. So whatever I say from everybody here on said out that uh, Kareem Jackson was going to be a corner, you know, they moved to safety. I, I can go back and pick the cards, pick a card, any card, right? Okay. Well, uh, I, I like that pick. I think Baron Browning is very special. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, again, What's his role as an outside linebacker if Bradley Chubb and Randy Gregory are healthy? Yeah, and I, I do believe that, that going forward that Browning will probably be an outside linebacker next year, but I think he's going to have a hybrid role this year. I don't think you know Bradley Chubb is either going to price himself or play himself out of probably returning to the Denver Broncos, I think, and they're grooming Baron Browning to be his eventual replacement along with Nick Benito. Okay, all right. So that's a, that's a good pick. This one, now see, again, I think I know what your pick should be. All right. But I think you know what my pick should. I be. know what your pick should be, but I, I am waiting with bated breath. You do not know what my pick should. I, be. I do know what your pick should be. Because. Text me what you know. <laughs> Text me. What, <laughs> put it in writing. All right, defensive player, Steve. Defensive player. Breakout for the Broncos. <sighs> Michael J. Moody. Oh, okay. A I like that pick. Michael J. Moody. Um, I remember. You first pointed him out to to me when we were at the Senior Bowl. Mm -hmm. Senior Bowl. And, man, I took a good look at him. I, I liked him. I, I liked his physicality. I, I like his cover skills. Uh, now, again, he's not an inside corner guy. He's an outside corner guy. And we got, you know, three guys, three, four guys on this team that can uh, play on that outside. And uh, he's been having some great battles with. Uh, and we know he has the physicality to play on that, on that outside. So, um, he's my guy that's going to be a little bit of a sleeper. Now, you know, we got Ronald Darby that's that's starting out there. We got, obviously, Pastor Tan who's starting out there. But uh, Michael Jamut is going to see the field, and when he sees the field, he's, he's going to impress a lot of people. He, he's been doing that in camp. Uh, he got recognized by Pastor Tan, and, you know, he said, hey, man, he's been balling. And, you know, we've seen him out there making plays and, you know, Seeing this offense and defense just go back and forth battling. Defense makes some plays. Offense makes some plays is a good thing. Um, but, yeah, Michael Ojibuti, man. I like that pick. I expected Caden Stearns. I expected you as a safety. He still went defensive back. He, he did go to defensive back. I mean, we didn't really give him a lot of other options, I think, on the you know the defensive side of the ball. 
you know, the, the defensive line, a lot of vets, guys that have been in the yeah, league or, yeah, yeah. or been with this team for a while. L- inside linebackers, you're right. Baron Browning's an example. Um, but, you know, again, outside of him and Jonas Griffith, there's not a lot. You got to get to the secondary. And I, I wondered. And if, I do like Caden Stearns. And yeah. mm-hmm. the only thing is with safeties many times, um, you know, if you're not one of the starting two safeties, you don't get a lot of, you know, normally get a lot of run. Now, Caden, it may, it may be a totally different story with this defense because, you know, they may have, you know, five, six, eight, five, six defensive backs on the field at one time, kind of like, uh, you know, how the Patriots do sometimes. They have a lot of uh, defensive backs on the field. So um, he definitely has an opportunity to uh, get in there and contribute. Um He's a great player. I think when his time comes to be the starter, I think he will be in that conversation. All right. Very good stuff. Breakout players for the Broncos this upcoming season. For Steve Atwater, Benjamin Albright, I'm Ryan Edwards. Thanks for watching Broncos Country Tonight.